Hey, and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman. I'm the pastor of Valley Christian Fellowship here in Longview, Washington. So excited to have you join me today as we continue to take a devotional walk through the New Testament. And today we are in Luke chapter 13. Now, Luke chapter 13, I just want to look at the first five verses. And I want us to think a little bit more deeply about these five verses in terms of how important repentance is, as well as how um, how the the natural disasters or the tragedies of life, how we have to be careful the way we think about them in relation to someone's sin. And so with that said, let's jump right in. Luke chapter 13, starting in verse one, says, there were some present at that very time who told him, Jesus, about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Now, you might be wondering, what is going on here? Well, we actually don't have um, clear records about the historical event this is talking about. But what we know is that Pilate, in his his, uh, clampdown of any kind of rebellion or in his judgment, he judged that there were some Galileans who were bringing sacrifice, who were coming to to bring sacrifice. Uh, He ordered that these Galileans were, they were murdered. And their blood was mixed with the the sacrifice and the sacrifice's blood. This is uh, an abomination. This is uh, terrible. This is uh, something that would cause a Jewish person to be distraught over such a a terrible situation. Human blood being mixed with the sacrifice. And in that then, there was this question. They were wondering, hey, were these people... Were they worse sinners than everyone else because they died in such a horrific way? Verse two, Jesus' answer. And he answered them. Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? He says, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or, Jesus adds, he says, or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Oh, Jesus, he adds another story. He, he talks about, first of all, or he addresses these Galileans whose blood was mixed with the sacrifice. And then he, then he talks about what we would call a natural tragedy. These men were building a tower and, and in the construction process, the tower fell and 18 of them, they, they were killed. They were killed. He says, so listen, it doesn't matter if it was human uh, evil coming to bear upon these men who were mo- who were killed when they were offering sacrifice, or if it was just natural evil, the, the tower falling over, and an earthquake, a hurricane, a flood, something something happens and and people die. Jesus, says, listen, don't don't start playing the comparison game where you're saying they must be a worse sinner because look at what they're experiencing. We don't know that's the case. It's not for us to be the judge to try to determine if that's the case for them. That's missing the point. Instead, Jesus, he drives the point home twice. Verse three, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Perish. Verse five, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. What does Jesus do here? He puts, he puts the responsibility back on the one who might be asking the question. You might be looking at the natural disasters around you. You might be looking at the, the people who are facing consequences. You might be even looking at the foolishness of people and the way they act and the natural consequences they experience. And you might be saying, they're getting what they deserve, aren't they? Look, look at that sinner getting what they deserve. Jesus, he doesn't play that game. Instead, he looks at us and he says, you and I, we must repent of our sin. We must look deep in our own hearts and our souls. We must allow the, the, the word of God to cut us deeply and reveal the, the thoughts and the intentions of our heart. And then we must repent of our evil actions, of our evil words, 
of our evil desires. We must turn from them and we must turn to Christ for salvation. And Jesus, I think he says the same thing to us today. Unless you and I, unless we repent, we, what do we deserve? But, but the, the consequence of our sin. Now here's the great news. When we repent in faith, when we repent, trusting in Jesus, here's the great news. Because of his death and resurrection, we can be secure that we are saved in him. We don't have to fear. We don't have to fear life. We don't have to fear the, an unexpected tragedy or an unexpected death. As, as, as hard as that is, as hard as that might be, we... When we have repented in faith, when we have trusted in Jesus and his death and resurrection, we know that we will be ultimately saved. So here's the ancient way for the modern day. The ancient way is not to be looking at everyone around you saying, wonder how bad of a sinner they are to deserve what they're going through. Instead, the ancient way for our modern day today is to look at ourselves and say, Lord, is there anything in my life that I need to turn away from and to turn toward you in faith, trusting in Jesus as Savior? You know, as this video comes to a close, I, I encourage you to take some time today to go and close the bedroom door, to get on your knees before the Father, to thank him for the security you have in Jesus for his death and resurrection. And if you have not trusted in Jesus, maybe today is the day where you where you realize that you need him as savior and you trust in him. But either way, take some time to turn away from your sin, to repent, to turn toward Jesus, to trust him again, not just to save you, but ultimately to, to sanctify you, to make you and I, to make us holy as we keep our eyes on him.